All right guys, it's cold and raining outside and I'm sitting here shooting this spring fragrances video for you today. This is a top 20 list, it's ranked, and these are 20 of my favorite men's designer fragrances that are perfect for spring. So if you wanna find out what they are, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Last week I did a video on unisex niche fragrances, perfect for spring. If you haven't caught that video, you can, and I'm promised to do this one this particular Saturday. It's a top 20 list ranked again. And I do have another one next week focused on spring fragrances. It's a different theme, more of a unisex list, might feature some uh, fragrances that are strictly male targeted or strictly feminine targeted, but it'll be more of a unisex list, but it'll be a theme that won't be like, you know, something more specific like what I'm doing today. But either way, today I'm talking about men's designer fragrances that are perfect for spring. And a lot of these are not overly priced. You can get some of these uh, fairly inexpensively, but uh, they're perfect for spring. But I'll get to the fragrances, but before I do, if this is your first time tuning into my channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. We're gonna start right off the bat. Number 20. It's Taos 1920 The Origin in Eau de Toilette Concentration. So this one I think would be perfect for more of a, a warmer uh, spring day. Uh, not like today when it's raining outside here in San Francisco. But this one features grapefruit, water note, clary sage, vetiver, cinnamon, geranium, guyac wood. You know what? It smells great. It's totally, to me, it's totally different than the original, which uh, was a lot woody and spicy uh, with aromatic touches with tea as well. This one just goes very, very fresh and watery. watery. Uh, just a very refreshing fragrance. And the grapefruit note is uh, fairly popular lately. It's coming up a lot. And it really does work wonderfully here. Somewhat kind of think, when I look at the notes, it might be similar to... Um, La Ligue's Ange Noir, uh, not Alexstrom, but the sport one, but they don't smell alike. Uh, maybe the grapefruits might hint at one another, but uh, either way, they're different. But this is a great one. It's a fresh one. Uh, save this for the warmer days. So it's Taos 1920, the origin eau de toilette at number 20. At number 19, going to the house of Bottega Veneta. This is Pour Homme. So this one actually, once again, it's a, it, even though it's leather, it's a leather fragrance. It's got very aromatic and piney, woody kind of, uh, uh, you know, notes in there. But for me, it wears a light. So I think it's perfect for spring uh, or even fall. But there's something very, very cool about this one. Uh, ice cold with that uh, pine note and the fir balsam. There's also some juniper in here, but lots of leather. I mean, it settles to a leather, but it starts kind of like aromatic, fresh and woody and piney and things like that. It does settle to a little bit of an ambery uh, base, but overall it's a classy, gentlemanly fragrance, perfect for spring wear. So that's uh, Bottega Veneta Pour Homme. So I wanna do also say that a lot of these fragrances, you know, I'm ranking them and you might be like, why is he putting that one there? But you know what? You really can't put everything at number one, right? So this is how I'm feeling this list today. And all of these are great fragrances in their own way. So I uh, wear nothing but the, the best uh, fragrances. And s some of my lists might not match a lot of other YouTubers because uh, I gen uh, generally prefer to find stuff that not a lot of people are wearing. So they're a little more unique, uh, a little less known kind of release. But at numbers uh, 18, we're going to the house of Lalique with Lin Sumi, this one right here. A great fougere, barbershoppy type fragrance with a boozy undertone there. It's got like the rum note, which is really great. Contrasts beautifully with aromatic notes of basil and sage, I mean clary sage. Uh, there's woody notes here, there's lavender and there's vetiver as well. Very, very classy. Uh, if you're looking for a, a house that not a lot of people talk about, Although probably people are talking about it because uh, uh, I praise this house a lot. Lalique's men's signature fragrances are some of the best with the most unique smells. And sadly, this one's at number 18, but I have one more Lalique here further up on the list. But uh, this is how uh, I kind of um, figured out the list today as I was sampling every frag fragrance and putting it in the list. But this one's a really, really great uh, boozy fougere. It might remind you of one other one here I have, but uh, it's kind of uh, its own unique uh, creation. Lalique Linsumi, a great, great fragrance. Check it out if you don't know it. This next one is from the house of Dior. It's Dune Pour Homme. Uh, this one, 
I know it sells at the discounters, so you should be able to find it. Not distributed here in the States, so probably the, the discounters get them from other uh, territories. But I love this one. It's a uh, sandy fig fragrance. It's got the fig fruit and the fig uh, leaf note in here. It's also got some slight uh, fruity touches of cassis, some hedion, some sandalwood, clary sage. Very, very classy men's fragrance. Um, not typical to other men's fragrances. I mean, you don't see a lot of men's fragrances using fig leaf, fig fruit, and things like that. So it smells unique. It smells great. It's perfect for uh, spring weather uh, because, you know, I've got that green and fruity touches from the fig uh, fruit and the leaf. Wonderful stuff. This is Dune Pour Homme from the House of Dior. If you can get your hands on it, please do, as I think it's perfect for uh, wearing here in the springtime. Okay, this next one is from the House of Dunhill. This is Icon, and Icon, probably out of all of the fragrances in this collection, is the best release. I think there might be one other one, but I think keep coming back to this one. And what I like about this one is like, uh, I like the Neroli here, I like the Bergamot, and I love the Pettigreen, uh, matched with the Vetiver, the Lavender, Cardamom, and Juniper. So it's an aromatic, spicy, woody uh, creation. Has the earthy elements in here because of the Vetiver. Has the bitter green elements in here because of the Pettigrain note, the leaves of the orange tree. So it's a great, classy men's fragrance. Uh, you know, it hints at, very lightly hints at Terre de Hermes, but it's its own unique uh, creation, but a wonderful, wonderful fragrance, perfect for spring wear. So that's Dunhill Icon at number 16. Now this next one, I don't think really got a lot of popularity, and there are a few fragrances here on the list that you might not be seeing on my list anymore, and I think they're discontinued. This might be one of them, but I'm putting it in this list. You still can buy them online. This is Gucci Guilty Cologne, uh, a very, very unique fragrance that's perfect for spring, I think. It's an aromatic, woody, spicy, powdery uh, men's fragrance that reminds me of, uh, you know, barbershop tonics and men's uh, facial kind of uh, splashes and things like that. So it has some classic touches, but it's a, it's a modern take. And sadly, people didn't really gravitate towards this one. I, I think it might have been a misfire. Uh, I don't know why. It's a very, very unique smell and it's perfect for spring. Do check it out if you don't know it. Um, some of the notes in here are juniper berries or some cypress, rosemary, heliotrope is what's giving us the powdery touch. And of course, there's some violet in here as well. A great scent. If you don't know it, do check it out. Uh, I've used up so much of this. This is my second bottle. So that's Gucci Guilty Cologne. The next one is from the House of Chanel. This is Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme. A wonderful fragrance. This one uh, might be a little intense. Not necessarily. It's a designer after all. Eau Extreme. Uh, they're make, giving us a, kind of a more extreme version of the, the original sport. But what I like about this one is the tonka beans. Lots of tonka beans in here. Some mandarin orange. There's some mint. There's some musk. There's a little bit of a, um, there's a little bit of a, a you know a, a aquatic undertone in there, not ne not necessarily mentioned, but I feel like there is something in there that kind of like takes from the original, which is an aquatic, and adds it here with the tonka beans. A great scent. Uh, you don't know it? Do check it out. It's Chanel Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme. I think it's perfect to wear in the spring. The next one is from the house of Prada. It's Luna Rosa Black. Now this one. Uh, I really like for its powderiness and the angelica note in here. The angelica note in here is just so beautiful. Uh, it, it gives me this kind of like a, once again, it's kind of powdery like this one, but I think more people have gravitated towards this than this. I don't know what, what happened with this one. Both of them are powdery fragrances and both of them feature unique notes that are not typically found in men's fragrances. You know, this one's the angelica note here, but a great combination of notes, you know, tonka, amber, musk, angelica, patchouli, bergamot. Yes, it does remind me a little bit of Bulgari black. They're different, but it has hints of it. it. Really does remind me of it. But this is a powdery version, and that one is not, I don't think. But a great scent. I think it's perfect to wear in the springtime. That's Prada Luna Rasa Black. A great, great scent. The next one I'm talking about is from the house of Bentley, and this is Bentley from Men's Silver Lake. What I like about this one is whole. Uh, its whole watery touch. There's a very uh, tart, kind of a lemony citrus touch in there in contrast with violet leaves. And violet leaves is giving us an ozonic experience. And when you look at this bottle, uh, it kind of reminds me of ozone, kind of like an ozonic touch. And I always mention if you ever see the notes of violet leaves, 
just think of the inside of a cucumber. It's kind of wet and drippy like that, lightly jelly-like. And that's the kind of experience you get with a lot of uh, violet leaves fragrances. And this one is uh, similar. It, it wears like that. So it's kind of watery, but it's lemony, citrusy. There's mint in here. Um, the amber wood note, uh, and then lavender and white musk, I, I think it's perfect for spraying. And I think this one you can also uh, carry over to wear in the summertime. It has its legs, uh, so it might be a little more intense for summer, but you know, we want our fragrances to last a long time. So this one's definitely a solid release from this house. So that's Silver Lake from the house of Bentley and it's Bentley for Men's Silver Lake. Going to the house of Cartier, this is Declaration. So I was gonna feature the Parfum version, but I decided to feature the Eau de Toilette. The Parfum's more perfect for colder, and we're going into spring, which is starting to warm up. And this one's a very, very classy masculine with sexy muskiness uh, added to it. And I like that about it. It might be a little mature for some of the younger noses, because it's ultra woody and spicy with lots of cardamom, bitter orange, the caraway note comes up and might come off a, a little too mature, but it's really, really classy. If you can kind of like embrace this fragrance as a younger person, I think you can like it. Lots of woods in here, vetiver, ginger, coriander, uh, a top-notch fragrance created by Jean-Claude Elena for Cartier. Um, if you like spicy fragrances and you don't know this one, do definitely check this one out. I think it's perfect. I associate fragrances like this more for fall because it reminds me of fall because it's dryness, but I think it's totally fine to wear in the springtime as well. So that's Cartier Declaration. The next one's from the house of uh, Moschino. I haven't spoken about this one for a while, but it's a perfect spring scent. You can wear this in the summertime too. I bought myself the bottle in the summertime, although it was September, late September, so kind of towards the end of uh, summer. And it comes alive in the heat, but this one actually is perfect. Uh, it's a great scent, and to me, I get, a lot of people say they get a lot of rose. For me, I get more pear. Pear just totally distinctly stands out for me. And you know, I can still smell the, the rose under there. It's kind of like a pear rose combo. So definitely kind of like pops here, the pear. Pear, to me, uh, it doesn't have too much of a distinct smell in comparison to like another fruit like an apple, but it's totally prominent here. Really, 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 uh, strong smell for me, not sure why. And as I said, a lot of people think it's more rose, but I get more pear. And beautiful pear with magnolias, pink pepper, and rose, some nutmeg, some cashmere, and elemi. Uh, I think it's a great creation. Funky looking bottle, one of the people hate this bottle. I think it's cute and quirky, but um, I think it's a solid release from Moschino, which I haven't spoken a lot about for a long time about this house. They've done a great job with this fragrance. I think there's a flanker coming out to this too soon. Either way, a perfect scent toy boy uh, for spring. That's at number 10. This next fragrance is uh, from the house of Robert Graham. It's Valor. So this is the one, uh, in addition to this one, I think uh, they might be on their way out. This one is no longer on Robert Graham's website, and this might be the last time I am speaking about it. This is a brand new bottle that I had bought a few months back. I found it at a discounter for about 70 bucks. Prices were like really low at one point, about 30 some, 40 some dollars. The price is going up and I think it's discontinued. But this is a great, great scent guys. Really, really wonderful uh, scent. Features notes of uh, sage and some ambery touches, but it's really beautifully warm and cold at the same time. So you have a bit of a freshness, you have a bit of uh, warmth in there, but that beautiful sage note really contrasts beautifully uh, in this fragrance and it wears like a kind of a cool amber. That's why it makes it uh, perfect f f to wear uh, in a, you know, like a spring weather. It might be a little too much in the summertime. I don't think there's any rules, but I really, really love Valor for that whole contrasty aromatic versus kind of like a warm ambery touch, a cool ambery touch at the same time. Beautiful fragrance, Valor. Fortitude is another great one from this house, but it's more of a, a fall winter but I think Valor is perfect for spring. This next one's from the house of Caron. This is Amémoi Comme Je Suis. This is uh, their latest release for men and it features hazelnuts with the vetiver. The hazelnuts is so prominent here, but the vetiver is also very, very prominent. There's also some grapefruit and ginger and tonka beans and tobacco. Very, very classy masculine release. Great looking bottle, but kind of clunky to me. It's a little too square. Uh, it's a refillable bottle, and uh, as far as the smell goes, I think it's great scent. It's, um, of course, vetiver with uh, hazelnuts, so there's a kind of like a slight nutty gourmand edge to the fragrance, but in the end, it's more woody, earthy vetiver and some spicy ingredients like ginger and spicy grapefruit. So that's uh, Caron, Amémoire, Comme Je Suis. Uh, 
I hope that's the, the, the way you pronounce that for, uh, fragrance, but I almost said uh, Pour Anom de Caron for some odd reason. This next fragrance might also be a little more challenging to get, but I'm featuring it here because I wanted to originally feature Eau Sauvage, but I think Eau Sauvage is more perfect for a summer scent. This is Eau Sauvage Extreme from Dior, and this one basically takes the original and actually makes it a little more aromatic increases and boosts up the aromatic and spiciness. So it features lots of lemons with lavender. There's oak moss here, bergam bergamot, rosemary. Woods are in amplified as well. Cedar, basil, patchouli, musk, and amber. Uh, this one, uh, to me, in comparison to the original, as I said, the original is a lot fresher, a lot more citruses in that one, and more aromatics and woods are amplified here. Less, The citruses are toned down, but still there's a really big uh, citrus presence in here as well. It makes for a unique take on Eau Sauvage. Definitely not like the original, but it hints at it, and not like a Parfum either. The Parfum is totally different than this, but this is a, a great, great scent, and I think the fact that it has the amplified citrus, I mean, the amplified aromatics and woods, I think it would make it more appropriate to wear for when it's still a little cool outside, you know, like in the springtime. So that's Dior Eau Sauvage Extreme. And the next one I'm featuring in this video is the latest from Hermes. And I'm obsessed with the way this smells, H24. I love the whole mineral, metallic touch in this fragrance. The sad thing about this fragrance is a totally original smell for a designer, but it's a very, very light rendition of that uh, smell. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they will re release a, a parfum very soon. But as far as the smell goes, it's unique, it's metallic, it's minerally, it's aromatic, green. I love it. I really, really love it. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Petrichor. It kind of reminds me of Bay 19 from Le Labo. I think the types of notes they're using, there's sclerene to give us that kind of like uh, uh, metallic touch, clary sage, rosewood, narcissus. Uh, I think uh, Christine Nagel has done a great job as far as the smell goes. Uh, it's a great unique smell and thankfully it's not reminding me of other designer fragrances. So that's why it's way up here at number six. If you haven't tried it, do get yourself a a bottle. I mean, get yourself a test first, like sample it or a de get a decan or something, but uh, and come back here and let me know what your thoughts are on this because I, I really think it's a, a classy, uh, new, uh, excellent uh, offering from Hermes for men. So that's at number six, Hermes H24. The next fragrance I'm talking about is uh, a fragrance from the Spanish house of Loewe. This is 001 Men. I'm on my second bottle of this. And I'm absolutely in love with it. So there's ambrette seeds here to give us a very musky touch. Carrot seeds here to give us a kind of like powdery iris-like touch. Violet, musk, and cypress. What a cr classy fragrance. What a cr classy fragrance. Originally, I thought it was iris in here. And I thought it would be, you know, kind of like uh, an irisy kind of like their own version of something like Dior Homme, but the more I wore it, the more Ambrette came out, although Dior Homme Intense features Ambrette, and I believe Dior Homme Parfum features Ambrette as well, but it doesn't feature carrot seeds, it features iris obviously. Here, carrot seeds and iris have somewhat similarities, carrots for um, the, 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 it goes powdery, so there is a powdery touch in here, but in the end it's a very unique smell, musky, uh, a little animalic, uh, on me a little cumin pops out, uh, comes through as well, wherever that's coming from I'm not sure, but it makes it very, very sexy. Um, I don't speak much about this house, I really do want to explore their fragrances, but there's so much there and there's no place for me to go explore these fragrances from this house, unless I go to Spain and to their department stores where they're all over their different fragrances, but for a great fragrance that you might not have smelled, check out Loewe 001 Men. Great, great scent, perfect for spring. I think it'll be a perfect scent. The next fragrance I'm gonna to talk to you about is from Lalique, it's Homage à la Homme Voyager. This is a great patchouli fragrance. For men, a great sexy patchouli, but lots of patchouli with cardamom, oak moss, bergamot, vetiver, there's papyrus, and also amber. So I thought that there might be a little rosy touch in there, but I don't think so. For some reason, I was under the impression that there might be a rosiness in here, but there's no rose, but it's more patchouli, lots of vetiver, lots of cardamom, and don't forget the papyrus. The papyrus is a very, very distinct note that kind of reminds me of um, Cipriol. It reminds me of Cipriol or Nagarmotha, which kind of similar has a similar note. It's kind of like an earthy, woody, uh, patchouli-esque kind of a smell that appears a lot in fragrance. 
fragrances and it's definitely prominent here but a really really beautiful fragrance originally i thought this was discontinued but now i see it online again so i guess it wasn't but a wonderful fragrance and this bottle kind of matches my background as you can see either way a great scent perfect for spring it's a like homage a la homme voyager if you don't know it do check it out the next fragrance I'm talking about is Tom Ford's Beau de Jour, this one right here. A classy masculine fougere for men. Lots of lavender with this one. Overdose of lavender with patchouli, rosemary, oak moss, mint, basil, amber, and geranium. Geranium, lavender, they have to be in fougere fragrances. You, you also definitely need something that smells like oak moss and patchouli. And they have definitely captured a great, great a version of a fougere for men here. And I'm so happy that it's in the uh, men's a signature lineup of fragrances because um, it's definitely a better even though it's still pricey like it's almost 200 dollars for 100 ml i think uh you can find them at discounters because over the holidays i was at off fifth uh, online and i bought one bottle for a friend um, uh, as a gift uh, for about $105. So they, they do come up at the discounters and you can get great deals on these. And it's a great classy fougere, perfect for spring wear. So that's Tom Ford, Beaudigeur. If you don't know it, do check it out. This next fragrance is from the house of Cartier. This is the second fragrance and I'm adding Cartier's Pacha de Cartier Parfum. Now this one actually might be a little intense, wear it in the cool days, obviously, but what a wonderful fougere, an oriental fougere, warm, spicy, take on a fougere they're completely different uh, than this uh, this one this one's definitely more aromatic and um, uh, you know uh, herbal uh, more of a spring uh, kind of a fragrance here we have something that's a lot more warmer because it's got those warm notes in here there's a liqueur boozy note in here as well tonka beans benzoin which is giving us the the warmth here labanum which is giving us an ambery touch and then of course uh it reminds me a little bit of the original fragrance from the early 90s, but this is definitely more modernized. It's for modern noses, but there's the hints of the classic in there, but a beautiful fragrance. I think this is one of the better designer fragrances of the last couple of years, and they've done a great job with uh, Mathilde Laurent, who's the in-house perfumer at Cartier, did a great job of uh, taking the original from the early 90s and giving us something very modern and warm and spicy. Again, this might be a little too much when it's really warm outside, but a great scent either way. Pacha de Cartier Parfum from the house of uh, Cartier is at number two. And my number one favorite is Guerlain's Heritage Eau de Toilette. This one's uh, a fragrance that will never go out of style, I think. A wonderful woody, spicy fragrance. Lots of sandalwood here, lots of patchouli here, lots of lavender. And there's amber, aldehydes, juniper berries, oak moss, and musk. This is the Eau de Toilette version. I prefer the Eau de Toilette for some reason than the Eau de Parfum. Uh, I don't know why. This lasts a little longer than on me than the Eau de Parfum. Something about the other one doesn't work for me. I don't know if it's a concentration thing. I don't know if it's a formulation thing, a chemistry thing. What Whatever. but the original is so good guys really really classy masculine this one dates back to the early 90s when uh, they launched the original of this but to me it smells very modern I think it's been modernized by Guerlain they have done that to a lot of their men's fragrances and this one definitely doesn't disappoint again it might be a little intense when it's warm outside but it's a perfect perfect spring fragrance for me I think it's a great classy masculine fragrance and you can get some great deals on this one and that's my number one favorite for spring this year Guerlain heritage or the toilette so that's my list for you guys today i hope you enjoyed it let me know if you're a fan of any of these fragrances in this list let me know what you'll be wearing this spring when it comes to the men's designer fragrances or just let me know what you're going to be wearing i'd like to find out if there's anything i should check out as far as fragrances go please do let me know please put some comments down so i can find out either way guys hope you're enjoying your saturday if you have any questions or comments please list below otherwise please like this video please share it follow me on facebook twitter and instagram and i'll be back with more videos very soon have a good one goodbye